Okay, extruder hub. First we start with the extruder that comes from the cartridge. Um, this one I actually cut off this edge right here, but you don't need to do that unless I can figure out how to make the gear work. Uh, the only reason why I cut that off is so you have room to get a gear and over on this side right here. So, um, you need to make sure that it has the little barrel nut and a uh, piece of tubing that actually was already in it. So, basically all you need to do is when you have your extruder, you just take, um, you'll have the tube sticking out of there, you just take a X-Acto knife and just cut it flush with that. So, um, take that and you have that put together, of course, with no screws in it. And you put that in, uh, this is the, uh, the base for it. And it's got that little guide right here where um, it guides the filament up into the, uh, the drive gear. Uh, without that, it's a real pain in the neck. When you try to feed it in there, you have to wiggle it and work it until you get it just right. But with that there, it goes straight where it's supposed to go. Um, after you print it, there will be a couple of little supports here. Um, all you gotta do is take your little uh, needle nose pliers that came with the printer and just pluck them out. It's pretty easy. Anyway, so you take this and you stick it in there like that. And then you take the two screws that came with it. There's four screws, but two of them have the counter sunk and the other two are, I don't know what you call them. But anyways, you need two of those plus two of the same ones from another uh, extruder. So you just throw those guys in there. If I ever figure out how to do um, the drive, uh, to drive it from the front, um, whether it be with a gear there or whatever, you know, this will be useful, but right now it's not doing anything. So let's see, now you gotta take these guys, this one. So this is the top. And this is the bottom where the filament feeds in. So take this one, and this one had a support right here that you just knock off and take some, uh, take your exacto uh, knife or whatever and uh, trim it up a little bit. Um, the shorter screws go to the top part, and you can see where the holes line up so there's put that in And of course, don't crank them down too tight because it'll strip the plastic. And then you got the 
chip holder. And that uses the, the longer of these two types of screws. Same thing. Holes line up pretty well. Okay, um, so now we need the little tabs, and we got these screws that I had to cut to length, and they can go in either way, it doesn't matter. screw it till I feel it hit my finger and then put this guy in You don't want to tighten this down because otherwise this won't move freely. So just barely snug is fine. It ain't going nowhere. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Okay. <coughs> now, chip changer. Now, I've already got the couple of chips in here. Um, I don't have any of the infinity rinse away, so I don't have a chip there. Um, these, they're so tight that you probably don't need glue. But, you know, it doesn't hurt to put a little glue in there. Um, I had originally designed this where it was um, just a single one here and when I printed it was printing facing this way this up and the chip slid in there perfect didn't have any friction at all uh, but then when I changed to the chip changer um, it's printed standing like that so this edge was on the bottom and when it printed, it does the first layer thicker. So it ended up being this edge here was thicker and then this thing fits like super tight. So I ended up having to like stick the thing in there a little bit and then put it down like that and press down on it until it pops into place. Um, of 
course you can always trim around that a little bit if you want to you don't want to have to do that but I kind of prefer it that way because the sucker ain't moving anyways um, this is designed to where it can go on either side um, because if you've got this on the left side of the printer you probably want this to be on the right side so that you can easily get to this and turn it and of course vice versa if it's on the right side you want to put it on the left side and so on but you know whatever is easier for you okay so basically this just pops in you just go like put it here and push it in that's it and uh, when the first time you do it it's a little snug it's a little bit hard to turn but after you turn it a few times it, it goes pretty easy so on mine I've got the um, I've got my PLA chip here and my ABS chip here um, so you know of course when I'm doing this uh, that's my PLA and then I just flip it down for my ABS um, gotta be some easy way to label it but there's not really a lot of room to work with there so uh, maybe we'll figure that out later um, when you're putting the chips in it's probably best to actually put the install the chip changer onto the chip holder before you put the chip in because that way you can tell the orientation better um, when you look at it so this is the bottom of it sorry I keep uh, getting out of camera range there so this is the bottom and this is the top um, I always kind of think of it as the chip pointing down because that one the left one is longer at the bottom so it's kind of like an arrow pointing down whatever um, anyways so the the long side is always on the left so basically what you do is um, if you know you want this position to be your PLA set the position Put the chip to where it's pointing like that or whatever um, and then rotate it to the next position where you want it to be and then make sure the chip is in there the right way um, if you don't get them in right and you gotta get the thing out you probably have to take an exacto knife and because I've in my trials here I've uh, done this a few times and had to redesign it I actually had to take and like trim away like put the exacto knife like this and trim away an edge at least one edge in order to be able to get to the damn thing to pop it out so not that easy to get back out um, anyways so now got the chip changer in there um, this parts pretty much all done so now um, well, yeah, of course. You got your um, quick connect, which just threads right in there. Um, I found that when I first printed this, it printed okay, because um, you know I, I wasn't. I was using the original cartridge, and the retraction isn't the greatest on that. Um, you can even hear the thing clacking every time it does a retraction. And, it leaves little bulbs and stuff all over the place um, it was okay but I still had to clean it up a little bit before I put this in there um, since printing this and so just about every part actually every part that I've done on this has been printed using a version of this <laughs> and it prints much better um, you don't have all the problems of the retraction there's almost no cleanup um, pretty much no stringing it works really well um, so when this gets printed um, using this hub um, I found that the the threads in here were pretty much perfect no cleanup at all required um, no no need to clean out the threads or any of that crap and this with the M5 thread it just goes right in no problem so, anyways, so that's all put together, and then we just got to do our spring for the clamp, which um, was originally 
originally designed by uh, Tommy D. Uh, he did a real good job on it. Um, I, of course, did some major modifications. It doesn't really look much like his anymore, other than these clips are the same. <laughs> um, so anyways, you take your spring, just stick the little caps in the end. The reason for these caps is um, you can see here it's pretty scratched up right there and that was you know when I first started doing it and I didn't have those caps so for one thing it creates uh, a lot more resistance when you're sliding the thing in and out um, and of course it'll wear this thing out after a while and then you'll have to reprint it so with the little caps on there that it slides in and out real nice and it doesn't scratch it up or anything so anyways so you just take this little guy um, this thing just so you know it prints upside down um, the reason for that is um, which yeah by the way you'll have uh, here and here um, you'll have supports there that just pop out thanks to Tommy D's design um, and then there's another piece right here that you have to you just pop that off real easy too and then there's like these little bars in here that you need to pop out too and maybe clean up with a file or something um, but the reason why I have it printing upside down is because there's less space here than there is here so you know why use a lot of extra material when you can just flip it around so anyways when you are doing this if it's right side up the long side is going to be at the bottom so anyways so you just take the spring stick it in here get it like right there and this can be a little bit of a pain in the neck but it's not too bad so see if I can get the camera angle right here to where you can see so basically I'm just gonna stick the bottom in a little bit and then I'm gonna push on the spring and pop sorry pop the top in there and then push on it and push it in a little bit further same here and there you go it's pretty much ready to go um, to um, the reason why I have this on here is because um, if I ever get the gear thing working <laughs> um, you would have a knob here to turn the turn the gear the main gear here to feed or unload the filament and um, if you're doing a purge to uh, be able to get the filament out of the hot end um, you need to release the drive mechanism um, so you're not fighting that uh, but basically to release it it's real easy you just squeeze these and it pops out uh, to put it back in squeeze it and then push inwards like that and that's it